Okay, uh, so I'm going to jump straight into this. I wrote down the questions so I can answer them as I go. So question number one, which pardon me, I don't have my glasses on. What aspect of the kingdom is in view this week? Define and describe it briefly. Okay, uh, that would be the, uh, the pattern of creation. Or uh, the pattern of the kingdom, sorry. Uh, that boils down to uh, God's people, God's place, uh, and uh, God's blessing. Um, God's people being Adam and Eve, God's place being the garden, uh, the garden of Eden, and the God's blessing being his word or the perfect relations, uh, relationships. Uh, what is a synopsis of this part of the storyline? Summarize the chapters. Okay, well, in essence, we're going to start with uh, God is the author of creation. Uh, God made everything uh, because uh, pretty much that is, I mean, I don't really, I, I can't really define a thin line between one and two, which is God is the king of creation and God created it. God is the author of creation. You know, them two things go hand in hand. Uh, when looking at it, uh, God is our king. Uh, you know, that makes sense. The author of creation. Um, your father, the son, and the Holy Spirit, they were there. You know, the Trinity has always existed. Uh, you know, God being king, he created everything in the earth. So, uh, when we look at small things and we give credit to things like the stars above or uh, we give credit to like some people worship ants, animals, but uh, they are, if they become a god or a king, uh, it's due to the fact that we have made them that way when uh, really God made us one way and that is to uh, acknowledge him as king. Uh, the third one would be uh, human beings are the pinnacle of creation. You know, we remain on the same day as the beasts. Uh, we share a lot of common in them, but we are more than animals, you know. Uh, we have been made in God's image, you know. Uh, and then this is the fourth one. Uh, well, th let me get to the last part of this part of the storyline uh, rest is the goal of creation now this is my favorite one because upon reading what I read it changed my view uh, rest being the goal of creation who would think is such a intricate statement yet it's so simple uh, when we look at it in detail it's it actually can bring me to the next question. How does it seem how does it seem so far this aspect of the kingdom sets the foundation for the biblical storyline? Uh, ultimately, we want to be in one place that's heaven in union with God, uh, worshiping him. Uh, so the author says that God uh, rested on the Sabbath day, which he made holy in 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 essence, he never came out of that holiness because he's always been resting in that Sabbath day, or it's always been, it's always been the seventh day. That is what we strive for as human beings to be holy, uh, be to be one in, in in union with God, the one and only holy God. So, uh, yeah, that was a pretty neat way to look at things because. The author went as far as saying, yo, this is this is the climax of creation right here. This is how we got here. Uh, but uh, how does this, again, this goes in line, I, I believe, with uh, the last question. How does this chapter contribute to the significance of seeing the holistic big picture of the Bible? Okay, because it's, it, it sets the foundation. Uh, when we talk about creation, we talk about what happens next after creation. Temptation, the fall of man, and eventually we get to the rise of man. And 
and then from the rise of man we get to that part that eternal rest again you know uh, in essence this whole thing can be summarized into the foundation of the Bible when we look at the big picture creation is a foundation of the Bible and I believe this author does a very great job at keeping it simple and brief and describing in detail uh, how important that first chapter is of Genesis as it goes on to the second chapter like at towards the very end and uh, the, uh, it starts talking about chapter 2 and the relationship that gods have with uh a human being, which is also can be, a, uh, which is also an answer to number four, the holistic big picture of the Bible. Because when you think about it, most of the Bible is focused on God's relationship with man. God doesn't talk about his relationship with the angels. He doesn't really talk about his relationship with the animals. He talks about his relationship with man. I mean, yeah, we are animals, but. And, and, and a different essence, so to speak. But, uh, yeah, that's all I really have for you today.